Good morning, kids. I'm really happy to see you back here in my class. So, today we're going to travel, but we're going to travel from the comfort of our armchair. I know that it's always make us laugh when we hear London is the capital of Great Britain. I hope that that will be not the only thing you remember from the course of English. And we're going to spend a weekend in London. You know what? You are those who planned this trip. So, get on board of our plane and let's listen to our captain first. So, you have to listen to what our captain is telling us and you have to fill in the gaps with numbers. You're going to hear this recording twice. Okay, so ready to listen? But before listening, will you please look through the whole text? Just in case to be sure that you grasp the whole meaning. Okay, and if you are ready to listen, let's do it. Good afternoon, passengers. This is your captain speaking. First, I'd like to welcome everyone on right wing flight 86A. We are currently cruising at an altitude of 33,000 feet at an airspeed of 400 miles per hour. The time is 1.25 p.m. The weather looks good, and with the tailwind on our side, we are expecting to land in London approximately 15 minutes ahead of schedule. The weather in London is clear and sunny with a high of 25 degrees for this afternoon. If the weather cooperates, we should get a great view of the city as we descend. The cabin crew will be coming around in about 20 minutes, time to offer you a light snack and beverage, and the in-flight movie will begin shortly after that. I'll talk to you again before we reach our destination. Until then, sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the flight. Okay, so I know that it can be very tricky for us to listen to what the pilot is speaking because he's speaking in his headphones and he's talking to us through the microphone. But you have to grasp only numbers. So listen again and concentrate only on the numbers. Okay? So let's listen once again. Good afternoon, passengers. This is your captain speaking. First, I'd like to welcome everyone on right wing flight 86A. We are currently cruising at an altitude of 33,000 feet at an airspeed of 400 miles per hour. The time is 1.25 p.m. The weather looks good, and with the tailwind on our side, we are expecting to land in London approximately 15 minutes ahead of schedule. The weather in London is clear and sunny, with a high of 25 degrees for this afternoon. If the weather cooperates, we should get a great view of the city as we descend. The cabin crew will be coming around in about 20 minutes, time to offer you a light snack and beverage, and the in-flight movie will begin shortly after that. I'll talk to you again before we reach our destination. Until then, sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the flight. Okay, guys, let's check. So, I hope that you got all the numbers. Let's see. So, good afternoon, passengers. This is your captain speaking. First, I'd like to welcome everyone on right wing flight 86A. Okay, and uh, w the speed is 400 miles per hour pretty fast. Okay, and uh, because of the tailwind on our side, we're expecting to land in London approximately 15 minutes ahead of schedule. That's good. So the weather in London is clear and sunny and it's 25 degrees for this afternoon, pretty warm and sunny. Well, wow, that's really great. And uh, so in 20 minutes, we'll have time to offer you a light snack and beverage, and then will be a movie. So, and the captain will speak to us later on. What a pleasant flight we had. And you arrived at the airport. So guys, you chose which airport you arrived at, and you chose Heathrow Airport. 
And after we have collected our luggage, we think about the best way to get into the center of London. We know that taxi is really comfortable, but expensive. And we want to try the tube, the London Underground, because it's one of the oldest underground systems in the world. So, what would you choose, guys? And this time you chose Underground. And uh, we will travel by the means of this transport. But before we start our traveling, we need to get some vocabulary. So, take a look. The tube. It's the popular name for the underground train system or the metro system. You can guess only why they call it like this. Maybe because it looks like a tube. Or you can see the sign, the underground. And that's another name for the tube. Of course, you can get from the airport by coach. A coach is a comfortable bus, usually used on longer journeys. Then, if you go by taxi, you can get stuck in a traffic jam. That's really unpleasant. You can't go anywhere because there are too many cars. The traffic is congested. Then, you have this word, convenient. Convenient means easy to use. Well, kind of synonym to comfortable, but still a little bit different. Then comes rush hour. Rush hour is the hour when you can get stuck in a traffic jam. This is the busiest time of the day when everybody gets either home or work and there are lots of cars on the road. And um, so it usually happens in the morning or in the afternoon or in the evening. Okay, so now let's take a look at the conversation that might have happened um, in the underground. So take a look. The phrases in red are the phrases you have to fill in the gaps in the dialogue. First, Let's look through the dialogue itself, the black part. And there we've got Fiona and John. So Fiona asks, so we take this blue line. Um, then she's got the other phrase. Well, we're on the end of the line, so we go eastbound. Eastbound means we're going east. Or westbound, then we're going west. Then she says, do we have to change trains? Sometimes you have to change trains in the underground to get to your direction. Then, but I can change at King's Cross, so we can both get off together. Get off means to leave the train. Now let's take a look at red phrases. So, mine is direct but you have to get off and change. Mine is direct, so his line, John's line is direct, but Fiona will have to get off and change the line. Okay, this will take us east into town then. East into town, we had the synonym eastbound. Interesting, okay. And then you take this black line, the northern line, and go north. So, we understand that Fiona has to change lines. Yep, it's called the Piccadilly line, but which direction? So, you may notice that some of the questions miss some auxiliary verbs. And that's totally okay when you're speaking informally with your friends. But of course, in writing, you can't have questions like this. Okay, let's try and fill in the gaps. Well, take a minute and try to fill all the gaps.
Are you ready? Let's start. So, let's read. I'm Fiona. You can be John. So, we take this blue line. Your turn, guys. Let's pretend that you are reading. Still, I will. Yup, it's called the Piccadilly line, but which direction? Then Fiona tells us that, well, we are at the end of the line, so we go eastbound. What is John's answer? And, okay, this will take us east into town then. Again, Fiona says, do we have to change trains? And uh, would you please find the answer to this question? And John says, mine is direct, but you have to get off and change. Yes, and the last phrase is obvious, so let's read it. Um, but I can change at King's Cross so we can both get off together. And John replies, and then you take this black line, the northern line, and go north. Okay. Take a minute to read this dialogue out loud to practice your pronunciation. So, now, I have a very good friend, Miss Olga. She's also a teacher of English. And she advised us to stay at this beautiful hotel near Hyde Park. I think this four-star hotel will be a perfect uh, accommodation for us in London for those two days we're going to stop there. And thank you, Miss Olga, for your recommendations. So... We are at the hotel and uh, we need to know where something is and what we can use or where should we go to ask for help. So we've got here maybe not new vocabulary for you, but still let's revise. So what have we got here? We've got bedroom, bathroom, single bed, double bed, twin beds, toilet, reception, shower, pillow, towel, lift, and manager. Very easy words. I, th I hope that you won't have any problems with them. So take a minute and label each picture. Okay, so guys, let's check and right. So there we've got a double bed. Usually we have these beds when a couple stays at the hotel. Then the second word is toilet. And in the toilet or in the bathroom, you can find towels. Uh, there should be, I think, three or even more. Then a single bed. It's a bed for only one person. 
but you can have a, a suite or a room for two, then you will have twin beds. These beds are not for the couple, they are for friends, so you can sleep separately. Then the overall room is called bedroom, it's clear. Then you get your keys on reception and actually you can get help there from the manager. And uh, of course, it's very luxurious when you have a real bath in your bathroom. And uh, if the hotel has lots of floors, you will definitely need a lift to get to your room. And uh, if the pillows are soft, you will have a good night rest. And then in the morning, you will have a nice shower. So, I hope that all the words are clear and you know them already. Let's continue. Let's read the definitions and then you have to tell us what the words are. So, the first definition. The thing you use to get dry after taking a shower is a... Definitely, it's a towel. The second definition. The object in a bedroom that two people can sleep on is a, a big bed, is called a double bed. The next one, please. The place in a hotel where you check in and check out is the reception. Number four. The object in a bedroom that just one person can sleep on is a single bed. The person in a hotel who can listen to and solve the customer's problems is the manager. Number six, the room where people sleep is bedroom. Number seven, the room where people have a shower and brush their teeth is the bathroom. Number eight, the thing you rest your head on when going to sleep is a pillow and I hope it is soft. Then number nine, the electronic machine that carries people to a different floor is the lift. And the machine that provides water that we use to wash our body and hair is a shower. Okay guys, let's continue. Then it's the morning and you get up and you chose your breakfast. Of course, when you are in London, it's not possible not to eat full English breakfast. And of course, you chose this breakfast, full English one, not the continental one. And what do you expect to see on your plate? Let's see. So, full English breakfast contains four sausages. Then, two tomatoes, halved, means cut in halves. Then, 300 grams pack mini portobello mushrooms. Well, so that's a lot of mushrooms. Then, three tablespoons of vegetable oil. Then, eight rushers smoked back bacon. Well, three slices white bread cut into triangles. Then, four slices of black pudding. Well, and 400 grams of baked beans and four medium free-range eggs. What a huge breakfast! I think that I can survive, I think, two days on this breakfast. But, well, a big one. Maybe you will need a friend to eat it all. And, of course, do you remember the lesson about sport and nutrition we had with Paul when we talked about the calories, carbohydrates, proteins? Let's see the nutrition facts for the full English breakfast. So, each serving, only one serving, provides us with 836 calories. 
That's nearly a half of what we have to eat a day. Then, well, you can see that it is really high in fats. And uh, if to see the carbohydrates and proteins, it is also really high in carbohydrates and in proteins, but really low in fiber. Well, think, of, think a bit. And how can you adjust this breakfast to your diet? Maybe you can add more vegetables to get more fiber, and maybe you can skip bacon. But, of course, then that wouldn't be a full English breakfast. So, at least once in your life, if you come to London, try it. And have your opinion. Okay, the next option you had to choose were the pubs, or West End shows. And the interesting thing happened. All the colleagues and the alumnus, they voted for the pubs. Guys, I promise, one day we'll go to London and have a nice evening in the pub. But today, we'll go to a West End show with the kids. Okay, kids, so let's go. And uh, you will have your London musical experience. Experience. Take a look. There are lots of musicals on stage in London. Maybe you saw some of them via the internet or you heard about them. And they are all really brilliant and they are wonderful and marvelous. So let's read the text about that, the experience of a girl, uh, how she visited these shows. And you have to read the text and name the paragraphs. Guys, this is a very easy task and you're going to have such a task during your external examination. This task is very easy and it, it can give you several points. Uh, you have to search for the information and sometimes this information is really obvious. Let's take a look at the names of the musicals. So the first one is Les Miserables. Maybe it's something connected to France, even if you don't know it. Then comes Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, a very famous movie with Johnny Depp. Maybe you watched it so you can get the uh, idea, or maybe you read a book. Then comes Mamma Mia. Maybe your parents listened to this kind of music and you heard something uh, from them. Then comes Wicked. Wicked. Wicked means evil. Then comes The Lion King. Let's read the text and name the paragraphs. Uh, so it's the blog of the girl, how she moved to London, and she tells us about her experience, about the musicals she visited. So let's read. When I moved to London, I felt like I was in paradise. All those sparkling theatres and musicals, posters everywhere, the dream. There was only one problem, my English was not great at the time. You would think that understanding English is not that important with musicals, cause all they do is singing and dancing. Well, trust me, it is. Especially if your favorite one is Billy Elliot, where the cast has a very strong accent from Newcastle. An alternative telling of the Wizard of Oz from the perspective of the two main witches, Alfaba and Galinda. The singing and dancing performance is absolutely breathtaking. All you want to do at the end of the show is to be green, yes, green, and sing like Alfaba. The song that will get stuck in your head for a week, defying gravity, for sure. Okay, the next paragraph. We all know the story, but the musical is just another level of goosebumps. You don't believe me? Let's talk about it again when you manage to stop singing this circle of life and acting like a giraffe. Okay, the following one. You don't have to be an ABBA fan to enjoy the great vibes of this colorful show. The Greek island setting, the 70th clothes, 
the engaging music. You won't be able to stop your feet under your seat. And yeah, you will probably be singing Mamma Mia, Here I Go Again for about a week. Okay, the next one. I know, I know, it's a sad story. But trust me, the cast is so good that you will feel like you were actually part of the French Revolution with flags and barricades and all that. And if you have seen the most recent movie, so come on, don't be shy. I can hear you humming, oh my own. And the last one. This show brings to life all the magic you can find in Roald Dahl's book. The fabulous setting will make you forget you are in the theatre in central London. And the kids, well, I'm not sure there is a word to describe their talent. Follow Willy Wonka's advice. Come with me and you will be in a world of pure imagination. Guys, I'm pretty sure that you can name all the paragraphs. Uh, so, this one is The Lion King. How do we know this story? Because uh, the circle of life, I remember it from the cartoon and acting like a giraffe, of course, it's about Savannah, it's about Africa, and The Lion King is the name of this show. The next one, Mamma Mia. Yeah, it's um, the show about Greek island, and there are songs of ABBA. And one of the songs I remember from my childhood is Mamma Mia, Here I Go Again. And that's an obvious hint for you to get the name of this show. The next one, please. Les Miserables. And it's actually a French word. I can see the article Les. And I know that it is French. And then I have the, uh, the hint in the text, French Revolution. So, the name of the musical is obvious. The next one, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Basically, it's the book by Roald Dahl. And if you read the book or you watched the movie, then you would know the name Willy Wonka. The last uh, paragraph, which was actually the first in our text, I left to be the last one. Because maybe it is one of the tweakers, but you can do it like I did, to do the ones you are sure and then leave one option that would become obvious because you have just five options and five paragraphs. So, and uh, the alternative telling of the Wizard of Oz is called Wicked. Because Wicked means evil and when we talk about witches, we think of evil creatures. Guys, I hope that we enjoyed this lesson. And actually, we've got only one day there in London, Saturday. But you've got your whole Sunday. And you haven't explored the parks yet. You haven't explored shopping. So would you please follow the link and continue this travel from the comfort of your armchair with uh, Project Britain Learn About London. I hope that you will enjoy it even more. Okay, guys, plan your trips. Feel free to imagine anything you like and may your dreams come true. Stay tuned, come back.